You know what time it is. It's time for an hour with Jesus. Amen. Welcome. How lovely How lovely Is your dwelling place Lord, I love your dwelling My soul longs, yes, it even faints for the courts of the Lord. That's the presence of the Lord. My heart and flesh sing for joy to the living God, David said. Even the sparrow finds a home and the swallow a nest for herself. It's a place where she may lay her young at your altar, O Lord of hosts. And blessed are those well in your house blessed are those who dwell in your house they are ever praising you we are ever praising you Psalm 84 goes on to say blessed are strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways to Zion, as they go through the valley of Baca, that means tears, they make it a place of springs, the early rain also covers it with pools, they go from strength to strength. Till each one appears before God in Zion. Oh, Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Behold our shield, O God. Look on the face of your anointed. be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. <laughs> the Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. Blessed is the one who trusts in you. to start off by singing the scripture this evening. Praise the Lord. That is my very favorite psalm. My second favorite psalm we're going to read through toward the end of the program. But uh, how lovely are your dwelling places, O Lord God Almighty. My heart and my flesh 
Cry out, sing out for joy to the living God. <laughs> Praise God. Well, come on in to the hour with Jesus, our favorite hour of the week. It's wonderful to have so many of you joining us tonight across America and around the world. It is a great honor to come into your homes and worship with you every single Wednesday at this time or whenever you're able to watch the program. Um, we leave them up on the YouTube channel for a reason, because some people find a favorite song in, a, in one of the programs, and they like to go back to that one again and again and again. So we just leave them all up there. It doesn't cost anything. By the way, if you've never subscribed to the channel, that doesn't cost anything either. I hope that it never does. But uh, just subscribe, and you can always then, if you click that little bell, I believe, you can then always be alerted when we're adding a new video or when we're coming on live for a service. And that way you'll always be in touch with us, and we'll always be in touch with you. Well, the weather is going to be turning cold in Texas. I think it probably is in America, wherever you are, going to be turning cold if it hasn't already. I know um, bitter temperatures are heading to the Dallas-Fort Worth area. We're very familiar with that. A couple of years ago, maybe three years ago now, we had pipes break. As I thought, my hose was disconnected, but it wasn't disconnected. But you know what? God saw it all coming. And thank goodness the insurance company gave us a nice check to redo all of our floors in the downstairs portion of our home that all got trashed and ruined as we had water pouring in our house from a broken pipe for like an hour and a half before it could be shut off. It was a mess. Our temperatures are not going to be that cold, but pretty doggone close to it in the next several days here. So we're battening down the hatches, whatever that really means. <laughs> and I hope you'll stay warm. It's always cool here in the studio because the lights and the equipment, you know, I was counting. I have 21 different things that I turn off at the end of an evening here. Isn't that amazing for this little program? 21 different on and off buttons on cameras and lights and speakers and sound systems and computers and the monitor. It, it just is amazing um, how our little production here has grown from the first time that we just had one microphone and an iPhone camera back in March of 2020. Thank goodness we've gotten a little bit more uh, polished since then. But anyway, because the, the heat rises here, I freeze Liz out at the beginning of the program. It's always chilly in here, but that's the way it needs to be so that I don't absolutely melt on this side of, of the lights. Um, praise God. Stop by the website, newglory.org. Find out what's going on. Going to be in San Diego the end of this month. If you'd like to be a part of that, go to the website, look at the, uh, the uh, details that are there. And i uh, going to have a great night of worship with my buddy Phil Driscoll and Noel Robinson from uh, England. I haven't met Noel yet. Looking forward to that. We're going to have a great time with the people of God and just worship over San Diego. Actually, worship over the entire country from there. And uh, I think it will be live streamed if you're not able to watch or come and attend in, per in person. But if you're anywhere in the Southern California area or want to take a trip to one of the more beautiful places of America... San Diego is certainly that. Come on out and have an evening of worship. Uh, it's going to be really special, I believe. And then going on to Hawaii from there, uh, I'll minister on the 4th of February with my wonderful friends, John and Pat Rogers at Dora Faith Church. All that information is on the website. And um, hopefully during 2024, my travel schedule is expanding uh, hey, Nigeria, we're coming over there with my buddy Nathaniel Bassey the end, toward the end of February. So come on out. 
going to be doing a lot more ministry around the country here in the U.S. too. So stay in touch with our calendar on the website, newglory.org, and uh, hopefully we'll be in a city near you. That's the whole idea, right? Praise the Lord. All right. Are you ready? Did you come hungry to worship God? So good. So good. So good, Lord. You are so good to me. So good. him today for his goodness I have he's just been so good I don't understand why <laughs> we're not worthy of his goodness <laughs> we're not worthy of the blessings that he pours out on us but he is a good God and he loves to give good gifts to his children
He's the one who made the heavens Put the stars into the sky One who puts the sparkle In a little baby's eyes You can hear him In the sweetness Of a mother's lullaby Yet how wonderful it is To realize He's here The Holy Spirit is here into people's homes and touch their bodies.
with the healing power of heaven. Would you lift up those who are depressed and discouraged? Would you bring forgiveness to the hearts of those who have been offended by others? my brothers and sisters with your presence, Lord. Would you go and meet them there? We worship you. We worship you. Thanks. 
song the Lord gave me years ago. the sound of worship tonight. Praise the Lord. (coughs) 
I think we're going to hear more and more of the sound of worship. Somebody said that when they heard that song, whenever you hear the, the phrase, in the land, that's referring to the Holy Land, the land of Israel. I didn't realize that when I wrote it, but again, I was writing prophetically as through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And so I think it was a prophetic song for the nation of Israel and how we're going to hear the sound of worship over there. <laughs> oh, praise Jesus. King of kings and Lord of lords. Mm, even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, I hope you're um, off to a good start in 2024. I hope you're keeping your New Year's resolutions. I am still on my, my no dessert fast, my no sweets fast. My wife is keeping tabs on me. She said, you're not doing anything secretly, are you? I said, no, I'm, I'm, I'm clean as I can be. <laughs> I did have some cereal this morning that required a little bit of sugar, but we can't count that really as sweets now, can we? She's giving me that eye again. <laughs> oh, goodness. But it's helping. It's good. Any form of cleansing is good. Amen? I hope you've made some new commitments in your life, whether it's in your spiritual life or your physical health. Um, we need to do that, and it's not too late to start. Just because you didn't get something in on New Year's Eve doesn't mean you can't start something right now. Praise the Lord. All right. Sing a simple song of love to my Savior, to my Jesus. I'm grateful for the things He's done, my loving Savior. Oh, precious Jesus, my heart is glad that you've called me your own. There's no place I'd rather be in your arms. In your arms of love, holding me still, holding me near. In your arms of love. So many beautiful love songs came out of the Vineyard Movement so many years ago. This is one that latched on to me, and I love to worship the Lord with it. I sing a simple song of love to my Savior, to my Jesus. Savior, oh, precious Jesus, my heart is glad that you called me your own. There's no place I'd rather be. 
your heartbeat This love is so deep It's more than I can stand I melt in your peace It's since I was a little boy there's just been an awareness from this little weeping as I would listen to Christian music on the record player And so a song like that, I don't really even know who wrote it, a song like that makes me relate so well of just sit at his feet, drink from the cup in his hand. As a little boy, I wanted to do that. I felt like I was doing that, leaning against his chest and just breathing, hearing his heartbeat. Oh, that we would have always that, that red hot, relationship that makes us crave intimate love with the Savior of our souls. I mean, for guys, that sometimes gets a little bit weird. It doesn't for me. I don't know why. I just love him as my Savior. If he walked in here tonight, I would give him a hug that would not end for a long, long time, as tight as possible. That's the kind of love relationship I'm talking about. That's what I started to feel as a little boy. Why did I feel that? So that maybe someday I would lead thousands of people in worship around the world. He has to build something in you before you can take others to a place they haven't been. God has a purpose for everything he does. Praise the Lord. He has a purpose in your life. I was sharing in Pennsylvania just a week and a half ago, to everything there is a season. And for everything on the earth, there's a purpose. There's a time under the sun for it. Ecclesiastes 3 is a wonderful thing to read and to put things into perspective. You shouldn't try to harvest when you should be planting. You shouldn't be planning when it's a season of harvest in your life, whatever that means in your walk. Mm. There's a time for everything. It's time to laugh and cry, sow and reap, love and hate. Time to be born and a time to die. Mm. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. All right. If you have your Bibles, let's just read a little bit out of Psalm. Well, Psalm 27. Another Psalm by my good friend David. I told you, Psalm 84 is my favorite. This is my second favorite. Psalm 27 from the New King James Version tonight. If you have that and want to follow along or you just want to listen or you want to read it out of your own translation, anything that works, works. <laughs> Such a wonderful presence in our meeting tonight. What is better than one day in the courts of the Lord? 
even one hour in the courts of the Lord. Psalm 27, verse 1, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? <clears throat> the Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. Love this next verse, verse 4. One thing I have desired of the Lord that I will seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret place of his tabernacle he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock, and now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. Therefore I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You've been my help. Do not leave me nor forsake me, O oh, God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take care of me. Teach me your way, O oh Lord and lead me in a smooth path because of my enemies. Do not deliver me to the will of my adversaries. For false witnesses have risen against me, and such as breathe out violence. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. I love David because he's so honest, and David's talking about his physical enemies because... Running away from Saul, Saul had a contract on David's life. He wanted him dead. How come? Because Saul was not living right for the Lord, and he hated the anointing on the future king of Israel. So he wanted to take him out. Nowadays, you and I may not have those physical enemies coming against us. Some of you might. I don't know. But we certainly have spiritual enemies. And oh, the enemy is trying to take you out. He doesn't want you to complete that which the Lord has begun in you. For he who has begun a good work in you and me will be faithful to complete that work. And so Satan's number one plan is for you not to complete the course, to reach your destiny. He wants to take you down and take you out. But he will not be successful if you walk in the principles of the Lord, if you stay close to the Lord, if you walk in the light. The Lord is my light and my salvation. If I'm not walking in the light, there's only one other place to be, and that's darkness. If we walk in the light, like he is in the light, we have fellowship with him and with one another. Praise the Lord. 
I want to focus then on that one verse right before the end. I would have lost heart. Your translation may say, I would have despaired unless I believed I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Listen, I had something happen to me when I was pastoring my little church in Colorado way, way long ago, about uh, 20, about, <laughs> my goodness, 32 years ago. How can I only be 39? I don't know. It's a miracle. 32 years ago, I was pastoring a church. It was rough. It was not going well, and I was discouraged. But I put on some Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir music one morning, and I just laid down in my office and just worshipped. And the presence of God came into the room so beautifully. And he gave me a picture as I was listening to the beautiful anointed worship music. At that time, there was a, a family living next to us who were Christians. Uh, they had two teenage daughters. They were not charismatic in any way, shape, or form. They were very conservative. I knew that from talking to them. Let's call them staunch Baptists because they were good, good people. Had never experienced the river of God, though, in, in worship. So I'm there laying before the Lord, and I start to get this vision of these two teenage girls in one of my services, and they're walking down the aisle, and they're just beside themselves, weeping in his presence, and they don't know what to do. And I said to them in this vision, it's okay. You can just lift your hands and worship the king in all of his glory. It's like they were saying, help us. We, we, we've never been here before. They, they wanted permission to raise their hand. They didn't know what to do. I said, just let it go, girls. And then the vision ended. And I want you to know, in, in, during that year and a half of pastoral torture, I'm going to call it. I could share stories <coughs> that would make you laugh till you cry, and then some that would make you cry. But in that year and a half, I lived on that vision of seeing God move in that city and people walking down the aisle with tears caught up in the manifest presence of God. Now, that was 1991. I then went through seven years of absolute wilderness and nothingness. The church fizzled. It became a worship center. That fizzled. And then it became nothing. God said, just give it to me, son. It's not time. And I went into a, the other side of the desert in my spiritual heart. Folks, not for a few weeks, not for a few months. I lived for seven more years until 1998 in November when I obeyed the voice of the Lord that I had heard at a recent conference saying, Gather the worshipers. I want to bring an open heaven to your city. And I walked out of obedience because I had zero faith but I would have despaired unless I still believed that I would see the goodness and the promotion and the prosperity of the Lord in Colorado Springs. I wanted to see the river of God flow in that city in the spirit realm. So I followed his direction. I began to minister at the World Prayer Center the third Wednesday of November, I remember it well. To cut a, sh a long story short, in the next several months, people started coming all across the city. They started driving down an hour from Denver. And here are some of the reports that I got. <laughs> I love to give God glory. Because he who began a good work... People would come up to me. This happened. 
I can't lift my hands in my church. We don't do that. When I walk in here, it's the first thing I want to do is lift my hands and praise God. Three elderly ladies driving down from a Lutheran church in Denver coming up to me at the end of the service. They had to be at least 75 years old. We're very committed to our church, but we've never cried in our worship service. We come in here and we just cry all the time. God says, remember the vision? <laughs> remember the vision. I would have despaired if I hadn't believed I would see the vision come to pass. Whatever God has put in your heart, he's going to bring it to pass. If you'll just wait patiently on the Lord. I waited for seven, actually a total of eight years before I saw his hand move. But when he did, he turned my world upside down. And he gave me a global platform in such a short amount of time. But there was a waiting that was necessary so that we would see vision and timing meet up and fulfillment come. Friend, it's a new year. Whatever God has put in your heart, wait on him and he's going to bring it to pass. <laughs> I give you all the glory, Lord, for every good thing you've done. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I hope that somehow his spirit has gone into your home or wherever you're watching this from and brought Jesus right there. His presence is so, so fulfilling. God bless you until next time here or there or in the air. For Lizzie and myself, bye-bye for now. <laughs>